My name is Robert Montano. Welcome to Secure by Default Web Application Development with Apache Sling. First off, a couple of words about myself. I work as a senior computer scientist uh, with Adobe, working on Adobe Experience Manager, or AEM. AEM is built on a number of open source projects, many of them developed at the Apache Software Foundation, including Apache Sling, Apache Jackrabbit, and Apache Felix, and I will be touching upon this during my presentation. This is the theme for today. We are going to start off with a bit of theory about thread modeling basics and look at a very simple sample application. We will practice thread modeling on this application and then see how Apache Sling helps us evade certain threads by default without any actual implementation work. We will wrap this up with a demo and some resources. Whenever we talk about security, we have some three pillars or three desired, desired states that we want to achieve. These are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Whenever you hear about a security threat, you can phrase it in terms of these three pillars. So, for instance, um, in terms of ransomware attacks, right? They, uh, the hackers keeping your data for ransom rather threaten you with the availability of the data they have taken it away from you, or of the confidentiality in terms of data destruction. Someone will be threatening the integrity of your application. That being said, more fine-grained models have been developed to help us in making decisions about the security posture of our applications and in enum enumerating threats. One of them is a STRIDE model. So STRIDE is an acronym and it consists of spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, elevation of privilege. These are all factors that you need to take care of into account when using the stride model. So, for instance, information disclosure, it, it is in the realm of um, confidentiality, right? Information disclosure is something you do not want to happen to your application. Denial of service is availability. And the application that we would like to, to see um, described in terms of a thread model is very simple, actually. So we have three bullet points. We have a set uh, of content authors that can post content, articles on website. And then we have the authenticated users that can post comments. And in the end, unauthenticated users can read those articles and those comments. Now, higher privilege uh, Users can do what lower privileged users can do. So obviously content authors can also read the articles in the comments and they can also post comments. When doing threat modeling, I find it useful to look at a data flow diagram. So in the center for our application, we have the content repository and then we have content authors on one hand who can create articles, authenticated users who can uh, post comments and in the end, the unauthenticated users who can read what those um, content authors and authenticated users have created. And just looking at this data flow, I think there are a host of, uh, of threads that we can uh, add in an inventory in a catalog. Even if we trust our authors and give them elevated rights, doesn't mean we trust them fully and always, right? The uh, disgruntled employee or collaborator contractor scenario is very much alive. So our first thread is malicious content added by authors. And you'll notice that I have added a, a code that says A03221 injection. Those are uh, from the, the codes uh, from the OWASP's top 10 web application security issues, which is a very useful resource when you're trying to figure out if your application is uh, safe from, uh, from certain attacks. Of course, authenticated users posting comments can also add malicious content. And I'm not necessarily talking about misrepresentation of information here. I'm talking about injecting HTML JavaScript that can lead to cross-site uh, scripting attacks. And the same way in which malicious content can be added, even though there are permissions, um, some users could um, you know, sidestep access control over application and authenticated or unauthenticated users could make unauthorized changes. And that is something we need to guard against. Other um, problematic 
uh, issues in terms of access control are authenticated users deleting comments. Right? The comments for our website are post only. Um, denial of service is something that sometimes can be handled at the application level. For instance, someone creates a bot that posts uh, hundreds and thousands of comments, um, which can overload our data store, they can make the pages very slow to load, etc. Extraction of personally identifiable data, unless expressly authorized, is something that uh, can also affect our application in terms of security posture. And of course, we do this uh, thread modeling, attempting to only catch the issues that are active at the application level. Many issues, especially in terms of availability, are handled at the infrastructure level nowadays. For, for instance, in terms of a distributed denial of service, there is very little that we can do uh, at the application level. It's mostly handled by your uh, hosting provider or your uh, yeah, networking interconnect who should have enough bandwidth to, to uh, absorb that DDoS. Good. Now I will give you the world's quickest introduction to Apache Sling so that we can follow along the, the sample application. So Apache Sling is a framework for developing web applications based on Java. Its primary characteristic is that it is RESTful. And by that, I mean the fact that it already organizes or the content in your database or your resources in a hierarchical structure. Now, a, a piece of, uh, of information is called in Apache Sling a resource. It has a name, uh, pretty simple properties, which can be string, states, numbers, binary properties, and optionally a parent. And, and that is basically everything you need to do to create a um, hierarchical representation. So, no, you don't really have to figure out how to create a consistent resource tree, what your API endpoints should be, is it slash user, slash users, uh, slash article, slash article, slash comments, etc. Um, you already create your resources and fill them in a tree, just like you would create entries in a database. Um, and of course, these there are some default representations that you can get out of uh, Apache Sling, so there is no need to write like default JSON export or de default uh, XML and so on and so forth. Um, so if you access a resource and you can see here that you have a host name uh, which is localhost and a, a path content post by home and in yet welcome is the resource name and the resource name we request the extension JSON so Sling gives us uh, a JSON representation of those properties a title when was it created and so forth and one of the resources that is quite important is the resource type and the resource type is important because uh, well, for JSON, you probably uh, are fine by just dumping the structures, uh, the stru internal structure, and letting uh, the client application consume it. But when you do HTML rendering, for instance, you probably want to render a comment differently from a page, right? They have different properties, different styles. Um, so Sling uses that resource type property um, as a way to decide how this is rendered. So here's a small diagram. For instance, if you have a resource type of post by component comment, um, Sling will try to locate a rendering script for you. Um, and it looks at two locations, the repository libs is the default one, apps is the override one, so we can have like framework rendering and application rendering. Less important, once it finds that string, that renderer, uh, it uses it. And rendering scripts are quite simple. Um, here's an example of what we call an HTL renderer script, and we'll see more of that in the demo. Uh, so it's just HTML with some um, expression language. It should be pretty easy to read. Um, of course, there's the um, old, um, you know, reliable uh, option of using JSP, and there are uh, other less, um, less often used rendering scripts used in Sling, like uh, uh, Ruby and Groovy, and it's easy to create your own. Uh, but this is what we go with by default. Of course, you can use Java uh, read. Uh, sorry, you can write Java code as well, um, and it behaves internally for Sling just like a um, a, ser uh, a script. And if you look at the annotation, you will see that the resource types property points to a Sling resource type. So that's that's how the binding is made. And finally, in terms of uh, Apache Sling, what we I've been talking about uh, now the repository and how um, 
it allows you to organize a hierarchical structure, but I did not really go into the topic of how this is stored in practice. So we delegate to a persistence engine slash application called Apache Jackrabbit Oak, which is a sorry hierarchical um, and featureful content repository. It's based on the JCR standard and it has a host of features. So um, it, it can store, um, as I've said, a content in a hierarchical way. It has a multi-version uh, concurrency control. It is very good with dealing with concurrent changes. Also, it has very good read performance. Uh, in terms of feature, it comes with indexing out of the box and various uh, index structures. You can have local, you can have Lucene indexes, inter integrates with Elasticsearch, with Solar. Full text search, uh, I know it has built-in access control, something which will become very important a bit later. Um, it can transparently store binaries for you and in terms of implementations, uh, you know, it can store data either on memory map tar files on disk or we can store them in MongoDB if you want to scale out your deployment. But it, uh, it is able to distinguish between regular properties and large binary properties and store them, for instance, in an S3 uh, repository or just on disk. So very featureful, um, you know, has eventing, versioning, and is a great fit for Apache Sling. It's almost as if they were developed for one another. Um, moving on to the security part. Something which I often see um, in web applications is application code handling access control. And that is fine. Um, it also imposes a burden on a developer to, to handle this in the code. Things like if user has part of the authors group, it may write to the following database table. Now, uh, something which is special about Apache Link is that it maintains the user's identity throughout all the layers of the application. And what does that mean? When the, the user makes an, uh, a request using a browser or a command line tool, it comes well other session cookie or authentication data. When it goes to Sling, Sling is able to assert the identity of the user, so it's John Doe, and it forwards that uh, identity to the content repository. And then the content repository can identify the user, it knows which groups is part of optionally and which access control lists apply to that user. So in this example, uh, John Doe can read slash content and can write to slash content post by home. So there is not, if that user wants to write in slash conf where it doesn't have any privileges, I don't have to do anything in the application to enforce that by the persistent engine will do that for me. And it's, there's, there's no way I, I can make a mistake about that. Of course, once I do the initial access control setup once, but that is done once and easy to review and make sure we don't get it wrong. Uh, in practice, this looks in the following way. If I go to uh, a certain part of the subtree and here content post by home, I can inspect the access control definitions and I can see that uh, there is an entry uh, defined for the authors. And if an entry is defined here, it applies automatically to the whole subtree. I, I don't need to do anything else uh, especially. Something which is active by default, something else for Apache Sling is that we have security features, the XSS protection. Um, so what that means is when rendering content in a script, in a template, um, the, a the HTML template language engine is aware that it is writing in an HTML context and it automatically escapes the output according to that context. Uh, if it's an HTML tag, but it knows what to do. If it's an attribute, again, it knows what to do to make sure the content does not escape the boundary. So um, you can see in the screenshot that there is um, the template says messages and expression language and then the rendering is escaped HTML and actual the object that message sorry resolves to a strong H, strong HTML tag hello world and close tag so by default without needing to do anything else we had no 
uh, no worry about escaping um, possibly unsafe content. But we, we cannot make mistakes here. And now it's time for the demo. This is an implementation of the simple website that I have talked about in my presentation. You can see here a page with content, images, text, and also with comments from users. Of course, I can comment um, something here and it appears. Some other functionality that is included is a user profile page where you can see the user's avatar, full name, the groups that uh, the user belongs to, and also as a technical detail, the user's path. Let's take a look. Whoops, sorry for the work in progress. At the access control setup. Now I've logged in as the admin user and I can do anything in the application. So this content subtree is by convention the location of all the user visible content. So if we take a look at the access rules, here you can see that everyone has access to read whatever is beneath slash content. And also that the users group has the ability to add comments, which is important. If we go further down, we see that the only ones who are allowed to write, you can see the write privilege here under this home subtree are the authors. So this hints to a group based setup. And there is also uh, a, a different subtree under content where effectively no one can write. We have a couple of read permissions and there is this uh, permissions for the users group, but that only applies to the comments. If we go to users, right, first of all, we can see that we have two groups, authors who are allowed to write articles and users who are just allowed to post comments. Going inside a user, we can see that they have certain properties. Now, I would like to navigate to the content tree. And if we look at the access control, we see here that for Bob Jones, only Bob Jones has full privileges. And there is also something called a home reader service which we'll come to, back to a bit later, that can read anything in the user's home. Also worth noticing is that there is a picture stored underneath the user's profile. That will also come in a bit later. All right, let's try and exercise a few requests on, the, on this application. So we mentioned that this application is RESTful, Sling is RESTful, so we can send a request that loads the home page. If you, if you look here, it is exactly the address of the home page. What is interesting is that it returns all the properties in JSON format. Furthermore, we can do the same if we add a, an, a part which we call a selector. So instead of asking for home.json, we ask for home.one.json, which also includes the child resources, the first level child resources. We can, of course, do the same thing with the comments. And what's interesting is that we can render HTML fragments this way. Actually, this is the way that the comment page is, um, is rendered. RESTful, again, we can send a couple of parameters. We can send a message, uh, a sling resource type. We talked about this earlier and an empty created by and sling will fill that in for us. And we try to post a comment as John Doe. We'll see how we can see the actual comment a bit later. What's interesting is that if we do this without any authentication, this will fail and it fails not because we wrote some custom code. It fails because we set the right access control setup and we don't need to check anything in the application code. And just to sum things up about comments, I we can add a special redirect parameter 
and then we tell it what to redirect to and then Apache Sling after making the change will redirect us to the right page which is actually the comments page and again this is how the application is implemented no custom code now if we would like to list the users this is unavailable for us right we get a uh, sorry a, a 404 response because we don't have any access to it and actually not even an authenticated user is able to to list them of course the admin user can do that because the admin has all privileges but what the user can do is read their own home right uh, this one we, we I took separately because it's uh, an essentially unpredictable path but this way we can see the, that the user can access their own home but interestingly enough without having any authentication we can read avatars and avatars are nested underneath the user's node and we technically should not be able to as a hint you can see that this address does not point to the user's home and i will show you exactly how this is done so i'm going to open up my text editor and you might remember that I have talked about permissions for a service user that were present on the user's home. So those permissions, this service user is a non-interactive user. You cannot log in. You cannot give it uh, as a username, provide the password um, and log in and do something with it. Instead, it is only available to application code. And this is an alternative to just giving permissions to user, users to do anything or whatever you like, like uh, we did for adding comments. And you can see it above in this example. Instead, we only allow this functionality to be uh, performed using code. And this is uh, the Java implementation. Now, I would just point you to this um, line, which does a service login in uh, using the Apache Sling APIs. So it doesn't use the request, the user coming from the request, it does its own thing, and then accesses the user's profile picture, right? And if it doesn't have anything, it just returns the default one from, from under slash content, which is why the service user gets access to, uh, to slash content as well. Now let's uh, let's go a bit back to the application. Oh, sorry. Um, and look a bit at the comments. So if we go to the welcome page, um, you can see I could technically as admin add a um, hello world comment but that is not rendered in HTML and the interesting part is that if I go to the actual content so there is the comment here you will see that it is not stored escaped it is stored in the raw format as it was sent by the user and if we go to the rendering script we will see that there is no escaping performed. Instead, the HTL, the template engine, natively understands that this is running in HTML context and by default, it should not be rendered. Now, of course, if we want to live unsafely, we can ask it to render it in an unsafe manner. And once we do that, the gate is open to, to all sort of XSS attacks. But by default, we are protected. And we, should, we, need, we needn't do anything to get XSS protection. This concludes the demo. To wrap up, I'm going to leave you with some resources about Apache String and Apache Oak, which are the implementations used in this uh, uh, presentation. The Stride model, as a useful tool for creating thread models for your application and the OS top 10 
um, which are a set of vulnerabilities um, most often encountered in, in web applications. Um, with that, I thank you for your attention and hope that you have some good takeaways from my presentation.